Okay, so let me preface this video by saying that I've been using an iPhone for the past several months as my main phone, and I felt almost no reason to switch to anything else. I got really comfortable with it. Until this came along, Samsung's S24 Ultra. There is so much good stuff packed into this phone that I'm really not sure if I'm gonna be able to switch back to an iPhone anytime soon. Samsung sent me this titanium gray ultra for a couple of weeks and after the very first day of using it, I immediately went and I ordered one for myself. At first, it didn't look a lot different from the past couple of ultra phones and then I put my hands on it for the first time. Oh, those squared off bezels, man. They look nice. And that's the moment that I really started to love this phone. To get some of the nerd specs out of the way, this is a 1440p AMOLED display that runs at 120 hertz. It's nothing really new there, but the fact that the display no longer has rounded bezels or curved edges means two things. One, the included S Pen no longer slips off the side of the display when nearing the edge, and two, this phone feels weirdly futuristic. We've had rounded bezels on phones for so long now that when something like this comes along with almost no bezels and a sharp rectangular display, it feels new and fresh. Is this gonna make a practical difference to the usage of the phone? Probably not, but I do really like the way that it looks. Watching videos and playing games on the S24 Ultra feels fantastic. The colors and contrast are excellent, and they've boosted the brightness again this year up to a maximum of 2600 nits with HDR content. How bright do these things need to go Anyway, like I'm not complaining, but I also don't want to be flashbanged by a HDR video at night either. One of these days, someone's gonna crank up their brightness with a white screen and it's gonna look like one of those world's brightest flashlight videos. Powering the S24 Ultra is Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It's a solid spec bump on paper, and yes, unsurprisingly, the S24 Ultra feels like a very fast phone to use but that's a given for a brand new Ultra device. The thing that I was more interested in slash excited about is the longevity of it. Samsung is now saying that this phone will be supported for seven years. They're matching Google's play with the Pixel 8 series, and I love it. These devices are so powerful now that they absolutely should last that long, and I applaud both companies for making that statement. I just hope that they'll both back it up. The big theme for Samsung this year, like a lot of other companies, is AI. Now, putting aside the fact that none of these features are what most people think of when they think of real AI, I actually think they're really useful additions to the phone. The first feature is a circle to search feature that lets you circle an image and search it with Google to find relevant images and articles. It's a lot like Google Lens, but baked right into the navigation bar. They also have a generative edit feature that lets you straight up delete or move objects around in a photo, similar to what Google does with their magic eraser tools. The ones I'll personally be using a lot though have to do with the keyboard and notes app. Now let's say I have a huge article about D&D flanking rules and I wanna summarize what's being said because I don't have time to read it all. If I select the text, hit the little stars button and then tap summarize, it will give me a summarized version in bullet points about what is said in the article. Or let's say I'm typing an email, but I wanna make it a little bit more professional sounding. If you tap on the stars, it will select your text and then give you different rewritten versions depending on what style of voice you wanna write with. Yes, some of them are a little ridiculous, but it surprisingly does a great job most of the time. They also have a feature that will live translate a call for you if you're speaking to someone in a foreign language. I haven't been able to test this one out yet, but I guarantee it's gonna come in handy when I'm out of the country. Now, before we talk about the camera system and the little bit of controversy surrounding it, I first need to take a quick minute to thank the sponsor of this video, ESR. Add some protection to your expensive new S24 Ultra with these new cases from ESR. They both feature Halo Lock technology so that you can use your Samsung phone with MagSafe chargers and other MagSafe accessories. It has 1500 grams of magnetic force, ensuring a strong connection for peace of mind. The Boost Flickstand case has a built-in kickstand on the back so that you can watch videos or make video calls hands-free, and the case is enforced with shock-absorbing air guard corners to defend against damage if you drop your phone. I also really like that the camera guard perfectly covers the space around the camera cutouts. It's a good look. There's also the classic hybrid case if you want a transparent, sleeker look that shows off the back of the phone. And if you want even more protection than just a case, you can add on ESR's tempered glass screen protector that has military grade protection and edge to edge coverage. Check out ESR's lineup of protective products today via the link in the video description below. All right, let's talk about those cameras. The S24 Ultra has a slightly different camera setup than last year. We still get that massive 200 megapixel sensor for the main camera, as well as a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 10 megapixel 3X telephoto. However, it no longer has a 10 megapixel 10X telephoto. That's been replaced with a 50 megapixel 5X telephoto instead. While the S24 Ultra can still shoot up to 100X with a digital crop, it does seem like this year's space zoom is a little bit worse than last year because the optical magnification is only 
only 5x instead of 10x. However, I still think this is an upgrade, at least for me. I almost never used the 10x telephotos on the previous Ultra devices. It was a cool party trick, but the higher resolution 5x telephoto is just way more useful to me. 10x is too long of a focal length for most things, but 5x is much more manageable. Both the 1x and the 5x cameras can also shoot 8K at up to 30 FPS this year since that 5x optical zoom has a 50 megapixel sensor. Feel free to look at this 8K footage on your 1080p computer monitor and make a remark about how sharp it looks. All kidding aside, the cameras on the S24 Ultra are fantastic, which doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Photos are exceptionally sharp, especially when shooting with the full 200 megapixel resolution of the main camera or the 50 megapixel mode from the 5X telephoto. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the ultra wide has autofocus and it can get extremely close to the subject, giving you a macro mode that looks pretty decent as long as you have enough light. Colors and contrast are great throughout the camera range, and if there was any doubt that Samsung makes a very, very solid camera system, that doubt should be squashed by now. They've been making some of the best front-facing cameras in the biz lately too, and that hasn't changed here. It does mess up the portrait mode edge blurring here and there, but the color of my skin is dead on, and the images are sharp even though it's not a super high resolution sensor. In terms of battery life, the S24 Ultra has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It's the same that it's been for all four Ultra devices of the past. I would have liked to see an even bigger battery in here just to push the envelope a little bit further, but honestly, the battery life in this thing has been so long that I don't think it really needs it. I was easily getting through a full day with battery to spare. You know, I think the biggest downside of this phone is actually just the price. Samsung has increased the price of the Ultra this year by a hundred bucks. It's now 1300 US dollars, and that is a lot of money for a phone. Sure, it's feature complete. In fact, it has pretty much everything anybody would ever want in a phone, but whether or not it's worth that money, I'll leave that to you. Let me know in a comment below what you think. After using the S21 Ultra for most of the year back in 2021, I called that phone the phone of the year. And it really feels like Samsung is on that exact same track here with the S24 Ultra. It's probably a little bit too early to call it that yet. I'd still like to see what Google and Apple and OnePlus and all the other phone manufacturers come up with over the course of 2024. But this is one heck of a device and I like it a lot. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.